Welcome to the GATE uh, Big Data and AI Forum. My name is Sylvia Ilieva and I'm the director of GATE and the moderator of today's event. The Big Data for Smart Society, GATE, uh, is uh, the first uh, dedicated to Big Data and Artificial Intelligence Center of Excellence in Eastern Europe. Established as joint initiative uh, with uh, Chalmers uh, University of Technology, Chalmers Industry Technique, uh, Sweden, uh, it, uh, has in, uh, it was uh, institutionalized in 2019 as a purpose-built uh, research uh, institute of Sofia University. But GATE is much more. Uh, GATE is a cause and uh, it's a result of three years hard work, uh, which was uh, acknowledged and funded both by Horizon 2020 uh, program and uh, operational program uh, uh, science and education for smart growth uh, to boost the big data and artificial intelligence research in Bulgaria. Uh, also, GATE is a, a new, uh, unique thriving environment uh, which creates a new research culture and uh, brings to, and grows the new generation of research scientists. Uh, GATE is a catalyst of uh, AI and uh, big data endeavors at national level uh, bringing together science, business, and government. And also GATE is an integrator that uh, paved the way uh, towards successful collaboration uh, within uh, European research area and uh, also with um, well-known initiatives like uh, Big Data Value Association, International Data Space Association, and Open uh, Geospatial uh, Consortium. So today we are happy to have you with us uh, to share what uh, we, in order to share with you uh, what we achieved during uh, this first year and uh, also um, to present views of and uh, exchange ideas with uh, uh, one of the most uh, brightest scientists and uh, practitioners in the field and uh, to jointly continue to explore big data and artificial intelligence opportunities. Uh, so we are bringing together different stakeholders from science, uh, government, uh, industry um, in uh, big data and artificial intelligence to tackle uh, emerging uh, challenges in, uh, in the field, uh, in the application fields of GATE, uh, which are um, uh, future city, uh, di uh, digital health and uh, intelligent government. So we will have today intense program, uh, a lovely opening with uh, uh, welcome notes from high level officials. Uh, then we'll have four panels uh, with uh, um, uh, inspiring keynote speakers and also discussions uh, with uh, GATE uh, uh, partners and supporters. And between the panels, uh, we'll have, uh, we will learn about uh, partnering uh, European Big Data Center of Excellences and innovative startups. Yeah, before, before we move to the, to the first panel, I would like uh, to present you what we achieved during this uh, first year. Uh, very short. Uh, so, GATE uh, is an investment in people. And uh, during this year, we succeed to attract uh, uh, 29 uh, researchers, uh, 16 of which are uh, early stage researchers. And uh, we are in total 38 and uh, with a strong uh, um, campaign for recruitment campaign, uh, we attract researcher, young researchers who uh, graduated abroad and uh, returned in Bulgaria, so we tackled the brain drain problem. Uh, and also we are addressing the Bulgarian diaspora with uh, the experienced researchers who are supporting uh, us. Uh, and uh, also, uh, we are doing research in, uh, as I mentioned, uh, for uh, research and innovation in uh, four uh, application teams, uh, uh, future cities, digital health, intelligent government and smart industry. 
And during this year, uh, my research results were published uh, in more than 10 uh, publications. And uh, we demonstrate that um, uh, we increase our capacity to compete for uh, funding. Uh, we submitted 15 proposals and uh, five of them are already funded. And we're expecting uh, results uh, for seven more. Uh, and those projects which are running are in the area of uh, uh, digital twin uh, modeling, personalized uh, medicine, um, data interoperability, uh, cybersecurity, and explainable AI. And uh, uh, we are working in cooperation with uh, uh, many uh, stakeholders. And uh, during this year, we increased um, our partnership and um, collaborations. So uh, we intensified our uh, collaboration with um, um, uh, Saplabs Bulgaria, uh, Bosch AI, and um, Rio Solutions and Tonto Techs, who are committed to GATE. Also, um, we become more active and uh, we are members of uh, Big Data Value Association, International Data Space Association, uh, and uh, Open uh, Geospatial Consortium. Uh, we already uh, had, but uh, we increased our memorandum of understanding with uh, Sofia Municipality, Sofia Plan, um, Medical University, uh, DeepMind uh, for a scholarship and uh, others. And uh, we were very active. We organized um, eight events, the research workshops uh, um, and um, other open days, information days. And we participated and presented GATE and uh, more than 30 events uh, uh, during this year. And uh, all these uh, people on the uh, research topics uh, and collaboration with uh, our partners, uh, we, we need uh, research infrastructure. And during this first year, we are ready with the design of the new uh, sustainable building where the um, open innovation labs uh, will be. And uh, well, it's a bit, uh, yeah, this is the, the view of the building where the open innovation labs uh, will be open for students and collaborators to demonstrate, you know, to experiment uh, new uh, technologies and uh, new uh, solutions. Uh, so it's a very uh, short uh, summary of uh, what we did uh, this uh, first year. Uh, so to, to set up the scene and uh, uh, to have, we have uh, here with us uh, Mr. Peter Drow from European Commission. Uh, he was cabinet member of Enlargement Commissioner Günther Feyhofen and uh, head of cabinet of Science and uh, Research uh, Commissioner Potocnik. And since uh, 2010, um, he's, director, he's a director at Research and Innovation, and currently uh, he's director of Prosperity in this directorate. Okay, so welcome. Uh, the floor is yours for some welcome notes to us and to our audience. Thank you. Thank you, Sylvia. And good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, apologies for my, my delay. I would love to be in that beautiful building now, which would also facilitate <laughs> our communication. Um, so, first of all, for me, it's a, it's a huge privilege and honor to be part of your um, celebration this morning. Um, I'm, I'm learning something new and I'm looking forward to um, many more contacts between you and uh, what I'm doing in the Research Innovation Department of the European Commission. Uh, let, me, let me share a couple of thoughts uh, of what to expect from the EU on artificial intelligence uh, in, in, the, in the coming uh, um, yeah, months and years. So. Um, I think in this circle, it's clear that artificial intelligence is probably one of the key technologies of our century. We have seen a huge acceleration 
um, in terms of computing power, management of data, analysis, uh, data analysis, um, and a huge array of application areas. Uh, so there is uh, a, a new dynamic, and um, that has led at European level to a very clear and shared policy ambition um, that we want Europe to be the hub, the global hub for um, artificial intelligence made in Europe. And that means made in Europe that it corresponds also to our values. Um, and that requires um, excellence, and, and you are a very good example, uh, excellence and trust. So how to, how to get there? And um, um, that is, I would like to mention briefly four, four points. Um, which on which we are working um, how to position Europe as a global hub for artificial intelligence made in Europe. The first one is the the right legal framework. Um, it is clear that we need to set a, a frame which empowers any actor, university, innovator, companies to exploit fully the potential of artificial intelligence. But within the right framework, within an ethical framework, within a framework which um, allows to, um, to avoid um, pitfalls and traps, um, to avoid misuse, uh, to secure privacy um, and fight bias probably something we underestimate globally, also given the male dominance in the uh, leading tech companies is the, the, the gender bias in, in AI as it is currently developed. So we have started um, last year a white paper with a reflection on, on artificial intelligence for the, this legislative framework. Um, and we hope to, um, we plan to come up with a legislative proposal for um, a uh, regulation on artificial intelligence early next year. Um, what comes out clearly from the right consultation is that um, we need to distinguish between uh, applications of high risk, where we need a high, higher uh, scrutiny, and other applications. Um, and um, um, so this this is, will be our proposal for for spring. Uh, we also need to look at how to protect efficiently uh, inter intellectual property related to AI, and um, make it possible to um, to protect investments and then to bring uh, the the developments on the market. And this is also a strong basis for excellence in artificial, artificial intelligence. Secondly, we need the right infrastructure. After the legal base, the framework, legal framework, we need the right infrastructure. And um, uh, let me give you an example on high performance computing. This is uh, high performance computing is the DNA for successful artificial intelligence. Uh, and um, there's a nice project called Escalate for COV, for COVID, um, which has given access to supercomputers in, in seven member states. And I'm very happy that Sofia University is part of this consortium. <clears throat> and <clears throat> these supercomputers have um, altogether 120 petaflops of computing power. Um, so it's not modest. Huh? Um, and uh, they have been testing within this project, within this consortium, 400,000 molecules uh, about their efficacy concerning um, uh, blocking the replicability of the COVID-19 virus. And they have identified one which could really be the basis for uh, a drug which could treat, uh, no, it's not a vaccine, it's a drug uh, which could treat uh, COVID. So, a um, wonderful example uh, about the power of artificial intelligence in, in the health area. But it requires high performance computing and uh, supercomputers. And this is kind of an infrastructure we will invest in also in the future under the Digital Europe program. Um, so with European funds, um, uh, part of the infrastructure, second element of the infrastructure are data spaces. 
uh, we have a data space um, ambition policy in order to to share data make them um, also uh, uh, um, findable accessible uh, uh, reusable and and create data uh, that requires um, uh, also investment and uh, an important part of the infrastructure the third element and this comes now very close to my heart is um, investing in uh, research and innovation to art uh, related to artificial intelligence in terms of science europe is very strong uh, uh, we lead um, the high impact science scientific publication on ai uh, um, our share is uh, globally 22 percent we are not as good as regards application so if you look at patents uh, um, uh, there um, other countries are or continents are, are better um, the us has a 45 percent share in ai related uh, patent um, china 40 um, so there we have some catch up to do um, but we come we came to um, a very clear um, analysis um, that in this big dynamic i mentioned at the beginning um, the EU or any, any single member state, even the biggest member state of the EU is not com uh, uh, competitive. We can only succeed in this very fast um, dynamic if we act together. And something extraordinary has happened uh, that the member states have asked us, the Commission, to come up with a coordinated plan of action on AI investments. And this is what we have done. So we have joined up forces with national investments um, from all member states and um, the EU investments under this coordinated plan with substantial amounts of investments to come. This plan is currently, we had the first generation uh, of this plan in, in 2019. Um, we will update it uh, now uh, in the coming year. Um, and I think it's a very important element also for, for you to see there will be substantial investments coming and I'm, I'm very glad to see that the um, Bulgarian plan national strategy for artificial intelligence is based on 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 uh, this analysis and um, these priorities and takes them further my last uh, and fourth point is about smart investing and it's about uh, creating networks uh, related to this uh, um, coordinated plan of action. Um, we, uh, from the European side, we would like to see centers of excellence on artificial intelligence to, uh, to be generated to, uh, and to, to become stronger and stronger uh, so that we become this global hub for AI made in Europe. And there are first networks of networks. Uh, one is called Ellis, the other one is called Claire, um, which bring together uh, different nodes of excellence across Europe. And um, I think that is something where you can play a stronger and stronger role in, in the future. Uh, and um, this is what I mean with smart, um, smart investments. So I would like you to, uh, and, and Sylvia, really I, I would like to engage with you um, uh, you have a standing innovation with your colleagues to come um, when we can travel again safely um, for a cup of coffee in brussels uh, good uh, coffee um, to see how we can engage in um, applications related to my area of uh, responsibility which is advanced manufacturing advanced materials um, where we can see how we can use more with data uh, and artificial intelligence. So I wish you a wonderful first birthday and many, many happy returns. Um, welcome. Um, let us do um, this excellent in AI, AI made in Europe together. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah. Thank you very much, Peter. Thank you for useful information and you made a good, uh, yeah, um, for the data spaces which is our first panel 
and uh, also for our Center of Excellence for the future. Thank you very much for your support and uh, definitely we hope soon we we'll can travel and meet in, meet in person and uh, uh, I, I'm sure we will come with great ideas for the future. Thank you very much for your time. We have also with us uh, Karina Angelieva, who is the Deputy Minister of Science and Education. Karina, do you hear us? Yeah. Good morning. <laughs> Please, the floor is yours for welcome notes to our event. Thank you very much, uh, Silvia. Uh, good morning to everyone. Unfortunately, I don't see anyone. And uh, unfortunately, after the great opening uh, last year uh, in uh, Sofia University, uh, this year we can't uh, we can't be together, which is uh, on uh, one point of view a little bit disappointing because I'm uh, looking forward, of course, to uh, to see. Uh, I see here uh, on the list uh, that uh, Peter Glow is also with us. Uh, I used to work a lot with him, but also the great uh, the great team of uh, of Sylvie and I see many other people I don't know, uh, but uh, I'm uh, sure that these are one of the leading partners of the. Uh, Institute uh, Gate. Um, thank, thanks very much to, to Professor Ilieva first for this invitation, uh, but also for her motivation and energy uh, during this year, strange year, uh, of a lot of challenges. Uh, basically, she didn't give, and give up. On the contrary, uh, she basically proved that uh, with a lot of work, uh, a great team and uh, international cooperation, uh, we can take the lead in this uh, important uh, sector of big data and uh, artificial intelligence. Uh, it's a, a, a field where we, the politicians, very often underestimate uh, what exactly is happening and what is the role of science. Uh, because it's so modern, this topic, uh, very often uh, we just think that it's happening and it doesn't need funding. But in fact, uh, this is uh, one of the biggest challenges in Europe now, that we need to build a critical mass. And we should build critical mass not only in living, innovating countries, but everywhere in Europe. We need um, inclusiveness in Europe, and we need to link the center of Europe with the periphery, because there is a lot of potential everywhere. And especially for me, one of the, the big uh, opportunities after this crisis, if we want, of course, to, uh, to boost the competitiveness in, in Europe, is really to explore the data. Uh, I'm talking a lot uh, about this, and I think very often I'm irritating uh, my counterparts here in Bulgaria, uh, because it's very uh, difficult to go out of uh, <coughs> the topic uh, of uh, infrastructure and uh, to talk about the necessity to create uh, regulations to create tools, but also to fund universities, research centers, to invest in skills, to invest in people that are prepared to work and to harvest this data. Uh, and only then, of course, come the, the famous commercialization and uh, the work with the business. Without skillful people, without investments in uh, universities, um, uh, I, I, I think that you have a further backdrop uh, on the European uh, competitiveness. That's why the vision and policy, of course, of uh, the Bulgarian Ministry of Education and Science is and, uh, first and the most important to, to support our leading centers of excellence, such as GATE, to create much more synergies with Horizon Europe, providing different type of um, uh, not only funding, but uh, basically boost research organizations and universities to praise and to introduce internationally recognized criteria for excellence in their work, but also in the career development of people. And last but not least, um, it's difficult indeed, but uh, our uh, ambition for the next program period is to invest much more in um, academia business uh, partnership, which has a variety of uh, different scope. And this partnership shouldn't be seen only as universities delivering to business, but something much, much bigger, and especially in artificial intelligence and big data, 
I think that in the core of this partnership should be, of course, the human resources and the skills. Um, uh, Sylvia, uh, dear colleagues, I'm sure I can say uh, much more, but on the other hand, I'm also eager to hear you and, of course, to, uh, to keep the, the agenda uh, so that we can uh, enjoy later the um, amazing presentations of this great team. So, once again, in the end of 2020, I wish you to keep the spirit, to keep up, uh, because a lot of uh, work is uh, coming. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah. Thank you very much, Deputy Minister Angelieva. So we are very grateful of your personal and institutional support to all Center of Excellences, especially to, to our center, and hope uh, we'll prove that uh, we deserve this support and uh, uh, we'll have good results. Thank you very much and thank you very much for your time. <laughs>